Hello there, how are you doing and welcome back. Now today we have the honour, the illustrious pleasure and also esteemed privilege of looking at the latest release by this newest duo, this newest tag team known as Slowhand and Van, which appears to give off stronger vibes, sync and frankly pizzazz than duos past such as Achilles and Patroclus, Lightning McQueen, Tow Truck Mater, and in recent memory, Count Dracula and Jonathan. Aha, Jonathan! Now what better way to start off and officiate the collaboration known as Slow Hand and Van than with the release of The Rebels, a reinterpretation of a song just released by Van Morrison not too long ago, but with some Eric Clapton guitar style and pizzazz. And that's what we're looking at today. And now, without further ado, in the very words of these two wonderful and time-tested musicians, let us open the gates and awaken those rebellious instincts that put them in the spotlight. First place. <laughs> So, jumping into the ingredients, the building blocks of this composition, what do you get when you put the greatest guitar player currently alive From a certain point of view. together with one person whose vicious energy with regards to activism for the rights of musicians in pandemic past, which from a certain point of view can even escalate to a certain degree of negationism completely, I hate it when he does that. And you put these two together to form a unique act, a unique duo, if you will. Well, we get Slow Hand and Van. Magnificent. So, now that we've gotten all that out the way, let's get either into the ingredients, the building blocks of this musical composition. And let me just say, we absolutely get all the tasty, juicy elements that we got in their collaboration of Pandemic Past, which was Stand and Deliver. Although, frankly, let's be honest, it is relatively easy to produce an absolutely smashing hit when you have the best guitar player alive behind you, offering you backup. Except for obviously Steve Vai, Tosin and Barsi, Jeff Beck, and you know, any, anyone else I can't think of in this one. Hold on. This whole operation was your idea. But focusing more on the song at hand, it kind of ticks all the boxes for me thematically, lyrically, musically, and guitarically. Very much in an Eric Clapton style, especially in recent years, we get what feels like a very old school blue shuffle, because because it is an old school blue shuffle at, at the core of it, uh, surrounded by some slightly more nuanced rhythmic patterns to help layer the song and give it some meat, but still keeping that core traditionalist element, which by the way fits really fucking well with the theme of the song itself. But We'll touch on that in just a minute. Probably not. Furthermore, we get some really fun, tasteful, bluesy licks, pentatonically driven flurries in between the rhythmic patterns, which again, takes me back to that traditionalist element, takes me back to that old school classic rock in its early stages, those that blues breaker era with John Mayall, for example. Seriously, really, really good stuff. Proving once again, without a shadow of a doubt, that a piece of music does not have to be complicated in order to be good. So bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. And plus, you know, it's Eric Clapton, so, you know, nice bends, nice technique, composed but always meticulous. He's slow hand for crying out loud. With that, though, we do get the sort of traditional bluesy stereotype in a way, where the vocal performance in itself is never extraordinary, you know, it's not someone who can give you a massive range, vocally speaking, but it always just serves the point, you just gotta harness the feeling of the song as opposed to kind of getting an intricate melody involved, harnessing and hammering home that theme of simplicity, musically speaking. So as far as I'm concerned, the ingredient side of things, these building blocks, is gonna be short and to the point today. Probably not. 
The song is very honest in the way it approaches you, and I just enjoyed it. Moving on into our flavours, our themes of the song, this is really where I appreciated the piece of music. The Rebels. This is just a big callback to quote-unquote good old days when if you were a dude or a dudette playing rock and roll, you were just in for it for the sake of a bit of healthy rebellion, a bit of anti-establishmentism, a bit of going against the tide for the sake of playing some music and expressing yourself. Especially in those periods of what, 60s, 70s, where sometimes you just needed the voice, your thoughts, your emotions, and whatnot. And yes, you're probably definitely starting to see a pattern where within all the thoughts, reviews, and chatting of shit that I've done throughout these what, eight months, whatever it is, I have definitely not hidden the fact that I've been dragging along these sorts of ideas for months and months and sprinkling them across all my thoughts and reviews. And that's why I particularly find this piece of music quite refreshing with regards to its themes and lyricism. In a moment in time in which commercial music has gotten to a point where it does unfortunately feel a bit manufactured with regards to the apexes of pop music, which again is what, what we sort of just get forced down our throat from day to day through ads and sponsored content and any other fucking thing you can think of. Although, from a certain perspective, it does sort of feel like we're beating a dead meme way after the point where it's been grasping for air and begging for mercy. It does still serve to reflect upon these things for the sake of the future of music. And I value this. Maybe someone else won't, but I always am. Probably not. And I think that the timing of a piece of music like this is absolutely excellent. Because off the top of my head, we just had a release from Bruce Springsteen and the Killers, and I definitely think that for the rest of his life, and for the rest of his career making music, he is never, ever going to succumb to the needs of the market, or to someone telling him to do something differently. We've had up-and-coming stars like Maniskin, and their a massive explosion post Eurovision, and for sure their mission statement is not going to be crowd pleasing and is not going to be changing their tastes. And I definitely think that timing wise, we are in a bit of a renaissance of rock and roll. It's not fucking dead, we're coming back with it because you can't stop these babies. And finally, we get to presentation because let's say it once again for the sake of everyone else and everyone here. What good is a delicious tasting batch of sauce if it looks like shit and no one wants to taste it? You silly donut. Well, from a presentation standpoint, I believe this is one of those pieces that you are either going to absolutely love or absolutely hate. I don't really feel like there's going to be too much middle ground with regards to public opinion. Definitely, it gets a massive jump start from the names involved. As I was saying in the beginning of the video, it's fucking Eric Clapton, it's Van Morrison. They definitely carry a lot of weight with regards to name dropping, so that already elevates them quite a bit, as opposed to a random release from an independent musician. But by the same token, that simplicity which I was talking about in the ingredients section of the video may be a bit off-putting for some, especially given, as I said before, the fact that at the moment the pop scene or the, the, the popular taste, let's say, not doesn't necessarily go against simplicity, but it does sort of yearn for a certain degree of complexity and added layers to kind of spice things up. Only a Sith deals in absolutes. So, am I going to listen to the song every day for the rest of my life without fail? Probably, probably fucking not. But it's definitely going to be a song that I always 100% empathise with and I'm going to thoroughly enjoy every time someone pops it onto the radio. Now, letting the scale of source speak for itself, I believe The Rebels by Slohan and Van sits on a comfortable 85%. And you may be thinking, Fred, you've said a few things about this song that may not warrant an 85%, and my answer is, have I ever been completely objective on this channel? Fuck no, that's, that's not what this is for. Those few of you out there who actually thoroughly enjoy what I do here know that I'm never going to be 100% objective, because I cannot. I enjoy the themes, I enjoy the ideas, I enjoy the lyrics of this song, and frankly, I did enjoy that good degree of simplicity. As I said before, I'm not going to listen to it every day, but... It's fucking Eric Clapton, man. What can you do? I won't let a single one of you lay a finger on that gentleman there! Alrighty, that being said, I have gone on rambling for a long time, and perhaps, arguably, a little bit too long. So all in all, thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed my thoughts, my memes, and my opinions here today. If so, please consider subscribing down below. We're getting back on some regular uploads from here on out. And uh, yeah, 
do remember, stay classy on the internet, people.